Selections play the most important role when it comes to photo composites and all kind of photo editing. Because without a selection, we don't have a way of defining an area of an image we are working on. Making your selections accurately with the full of control is extremely important to make stunning composite or editing of your projects. So once you have the foundation of the correct tools and features, you will be able to make any selection without memorizing the steps. Also you will be able to use correct tool in the correct situation. Because image to image, object to object, the selection tool we should use is different. This lesson I have split into two videos. The first video which you are watching right now is very important because these basics we used to make complex selections which we will talk about in my upcoming videos. So let's go through the tool list first. I am Sanat Chandratilaka for Sanat Academy. If you want to follow along with me, check the links in the description for the practical files. The first selection group is the marquee tool group. You will find rectangular marquee tool, elliptical marquee tool, single row and single column marquee tools here. These are very simple and important selection tools. The second selection tool group is the lasso tool group. You will find the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool inside the group. I will illustrate all the tools one by one in a moment. The third selection group consists of object selection tool, quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. Then if you go to the main bar and click on select, we can find these features as well. Select color range, select focus area, select subject, select sky and select and mask. These are bit advanced and key features when you do your photo composites. But the select focus area doesn't help in most cases. Also we can do the same by using select subject feature. And definitely I will update you if I find a better way to use the select focus area feature. We have another method of making selections by channels. If you go to window and click on channels, you can see the channel bar. Selections by channels also a bit advanced and it can be a life savior when you have some certain of difficult selections. I have taken the list of selection tools into this chart. After watching this video, you will master this green outline tool groups. Also as a result, you will get to know feathering, anti-aliasing and other related knowledge in Photoshop. Once we have gone through those tools, you are ready to learn other advanced tools, which I have marked in magenta color. Since we have a dedicated video just for the pen tool, I will not take time to talk about the pen tool, but I will take that time to show you one of the use of the pen tool, which is I will show you how to cut out an object while preserving its original shadows. You can quickly select the rectangular marquee tool by pressing letter M. Then you can switch between the elliptical marquee tool and the rectangular marquee tool by pressing shift M. Let's select the rectangular marquee tool and then click on the canvas and drag to make a selection. If you want the selected area in a separate layer, press ctrl or command J. See, when I hide the background layer by click on the little icon to the left of the layer thumbnail, you can see only the selected area has been cut out into a new layer. So you know if you click on the canvas and drag, it will create a selection. But if you press and hold the ALT or OPTION key, your selection will be created from the center of where you have clicked. See, now it considered the selection center as the point that I have clicked. Also, if you press and hold the SHIFT key, you will get a perfect square selection. And if you press the both SHIFT and ALT keys, it will do the both tasks. You can make a perfect square from the center of the point where you click. At the same time, if you want to move your selection, press and hold the space bar and move your selection by your mouse point. You should know when you select an area, the selection is assigned for any layer that you select, not only for one layer. Let's hide the background layer and let's think you wanted to delete the selected area. So you have to select the exact layer not this layer. See, if you press delete key now, nothing is happening. There are no pixels on that layer to delete inside the selection. So select this layer right here and press the delete key. Now it has something to delete. If you want to deselect, that means if you want to remove the selection, go to select and deselect. But who does those things? Just press ctrl or command D to deselect. I will delete these two layers by dragging them into the bin icon and let's move to the elliptical marquee tool. 
This tool works same as the rectangular marquee tool, but this creates only ellipse and circles. If you click and drag, it gives you a elliptical selection. If you press and hold Alt or Option key, you can make the selection from the center of the clicking point. If you press the Shift key and make a selection, you can make a perfect circle and you can move the selection by pressing the space bar same as before. As the next tip, let's select the rectangular marquee tool and go to the tool option bar. Check the style, it's set to normal, right? If you click the drop down arrow icon, you will see it has another two options to select. Let's select fixed ratio and set the width as 1 and the height as 4. You should know there is no point of typing units like centimeters, points or inches for an aspect ratio. So don't waste your time to type those in here. Now, as you can see, if you start to make a selection, it always maintain in the aspect ratio. Let's go to the tool option bar and select fix size this time and set the width as 5 cm and the height as 10 cm. Since we are talking about a specific size, we should type units like centimeters here. Now if you make a selection, it will select a 5 cm width and 10 cm height selection only. It's same if you do this with the elliptical marquee tool as well. If the fixed ratio set to 1 to 5 for this example, it maintains that aspect ratio for the selection. And we will create a perfect circle this time by fixed size. Set the width as 5 cm and the height as 5 cm as well. Check here, it is making a perfect circle with the 5 cm diameter. Because here we set the width and the height both as 5 cm. Let's press Ctrl J to take the selected area into a new layer. Then make a selection from the rectangular marquee tool as well. Press Ctrl J to take it to a new layer. Remember you have to select the correct layer before press Ctrl J to get the exact result that you wanted to create. Let's hide the background. What I really wanted to show here was if you select this from the move tool, you can move it, right? And if you select the other layer or object, you can move that as well. That because you have activated this auto select box. What if the auto select box is unchecked? Here you have select the rectangular layer and if you try to select the circle and move it, it's just not working. Instead, you can move only the rectangular layer. If you want to move the circular object, you have to select it from the layer panel and then you can move the object. So, if you face this problem anytime, just check this auto select box right here. The problem will be solved. See, again it's moving as we wanted. So, it's time to move to the next tool which is single row marquee tool. If you select the tool and click on the canvas, it can make a selection in the width of your document and a height of 1 pixel. That means it creates 1 pixel height horizontal line selection. If you zoom it, you can see the height is just 1 pixel. So let's press Ctrl J and hide the background layer. Yes, you can barely see it, but if you press Ctrl or Command T and then make it stretch, it will stretch that 1 pixel height row and see what we got here. This tool we can use to create pixel stretch effects. Also it helps when you want to delete one pixel line from your background edges. The same way single column marquee tool creates a selection in the height of your document and width of one pixel. Means it creates one pixel with vertical line selection. We can stretch the pixel same as we did before and we can use those in our composites. When you have a selection and if you try to make another selection, the previous selection will disappear. So how we can add a new selection to the existing one? Make a selection on your canvas and then press and hold the shift key and create another selection over the existing selection. As you can see, the existing selection didn't disappear and the new selection is added. Instead of the shift key, if you press alt or option key while making the selection, it subtract your selection. When you add or subscribe the selection, you can switch between different selection tools and it works fine. Let's use elliptical marquee tool here. Press and hold the shift key to add a selection and press and hold alt or option key to subscribe the selection. Let's see how it looks like if you fill it with a color. 
The same task you can do with these buttons up here. The first button is add to selection button as you can see. And the second button is subscribe from the selection which we did by alt or option button earlier. And the third button is intersection button. Instead of adding or subtracting one selection from another, the intersect selection makes a new selection where the first and the second selection meet. That means it select only the common area. The shortcut is Alt or Option and Shift together and your mouse cursor will become a small X. Then you can do an intersect selection this way. So that was the market tool group. It looks like simple, actually it is, but it has more potential and can be used in different situations. I know I can directly go to the complex selections, but the intention of this video is to build a proper base to beginners. So be patient and learn. If you have a proper base, you will not stuck anywhere anymore. Again, I have something to explain to you. Let's make a selection and fill the selection by pressing Alt or Option and Backspace. Then go to the tool option bar and uncheck this anti-aliasing box. Then same way make a selection and fill it. Let's compare the both shapes that we created now. If you see carefully, the selection we made while anti-aliasing turn on has kind of a soft edge. And the other selection that we made while turning off the anti-aliasing has a jagged look. That means you can see this spiky effect on the edges. So what basically this anti-aliasing does is it smooths the jagged edges of a selection by softening the color transition between the edge pixels and the background pixels without losing the details because it smooths only the edges. So I recommend turning on this anti-aliasing feature unless you have a special reason. You can turn the anti-aliasing on with the marquee tool group lasso tool group and the magic wand tool but you should turn on the anti-aliasing feature before you make the selection you cannot add anti-aliasing on existing selections so it is time to understand feathering in photoshop first we have a simple selection and i am filling it with a color then you can select any lasso or marquee tool and enter a feather value if you go to the tool option bar here let's keep it as a 20 pixels and now make a selection and fill it with the color. Let's compare the both selections. See, we have smooth edges of a selection by feathering. Feathering blurs edges by blurring a transition between the selection and surrounding pixels. This blurring can cause some loss of details at the edges of the selection, but it is totally fine for our composites. So now you know how to add a feather before you do a selection but it is different when you already have a selection and if you want to define a feather for it. No worries, now you are going to learn that as well. As you can see there is a selection around this cat's right eye. You can define a feather if you go to select, modify and feather. Now you can make the feather in radius. Let's make it as 20 pixels. Now, if you press Ctrl or Command J, you will see how it created the feathering around the selection. I will make a black background so you can see it properly and nicely. See, it just ready for your composites. So, if you are expecting smooth edges, turn on anti-aliasing and use feathering feature. There are more ways to make smooth edges. We will learn all of it later. The shortcut of the lasso tool is letter L. By pressing shift L repeatedly, you can switch between the regular lasso tool and the other tools inside the group. Let's select the regular lasso tool. It's right here as the first tool of the group. Just click on the canvas and draw around the object or area you want to select. Same as you can see right now. All these buttons which you have learned few minutes ago for the marquee tools works fine with this lasso tool as well but we will use shortcuts. Let's select around this bird. Then press and hold the shift key and select the other bird. Let's remove these birds from the image. For that go to edit content aware fill and keep all the settings as default for now. But let's make the output to a new layer and click ok. Press Ctrl D to deselect and see. 
the birds are gone and the filling is on a separate layer. Same way we can remove all the birds from the image. Select the first bird and press and hold the shift key and select the rest of the birds. Now see carefully, if you want to duplicate the background layer now, you just can't press Ctrl or Command J because you have a selection, it will just duplicate the selection as you can see now. If you don't have a selection, you can duplicate the selection by the shortcut like this. But now what you should really do is select the background layer and drag it to this plus icon. That way you can do exactly what you wanted. Let's merge these two layers by selecting the both layers. Then right click and click on merge layers to keep this tutorial simple as possible. I will rename the layer as no birds. And then go to edit content aware fill and keep the output to a current layer. So it will not make a new layer as before. Ok, now all the birds are gone. You should know you don't want to complete the drawing always. You can release the mouse without completing the shape and the lasso tool will complete the shape by connecting the gap between the end point and the starting point by a straight line. Let's select the polygonal lasso tool and click, click and continue the same way. When you have reached to the starting point, the tool shows up a small circle. Remember the pen tool in my last video? Same like that. So if you click the starting point again, you can get the selection. But no need to always complete your selection that way. You can double click the last point and it will connect the starting point and the end point by a straight line. Let's select this cable by using the polygonal lasso tool. Click here to start the selection and then click here to continue. When you zoom in the canvas and do your selections, always you gonna need pan over the canvas. See how I pan over the canvas by press and hold the space bar. Let's continue the selection. We can click here and straight away we can go to the last point. Now if you double click, it will complete the selection. Let's create a copy of the previous layer and rename as no cable because we are going to remove all the cables from the image. Organizing the layers is very important in Photoshop. Now go to edit content aware fill and click ok. The cable will be vanished. See I am making a selection from the lasso tool. As soon as I press and hold the alt or option key it's converting into the polygonal lasso tool and you can use it. Again, if you release the ALT or OPTION key, it's converting to the regular lasso tool again. Let's select this cable as well, starting from the polygonal lasso tool and continue. Since all the cables are straight, polygonal lasso tool is the best tool here. Now for this curve of the moon, I will use the regular lasso tool by press and hold ALT or OPTION key. Now release the ALT or OPTION key and continue with the polygonal lasso tool and double click to complete the selection. We can fill the selection and you know how to do it by content aware fill. And in most cases it is doing a perfect job. Let's select all the cables now. You know if you want to add to a selection, press and hold the shift key and start making the selection. After the first click of the new selection, you can release the shift key. It doesn't require any more for that selection. Let's continue. See here, I have selected some additional content. Let's subscribe that area by press and hold the ALT or OPTION key and start by click on the first point. Now you can release the ALT or OPTION key and continue. See, it subtracted the area. After you have selected all the cables, you can fill it by content aware fill again. I will fast forward this because we have used the content aware fill number of time today. I need your attention to this point as well. See this selection, if you want to paint on the canvas by the brush tool, now you can paint only inside the selection, right? That you already know. Let's go back. If you want to temporarily hide the selection, you can press Ctrl or Command H. It is just hiding the selection, not deselecting. That means the selection is still active. We just can't see it. If you paint, you can understand what is going on. See, I think you got what is going on. If you press Ctrl or Command H again, the selection will visible again. See, I am pressing Ctrl H and start painting. It is painting inside the selection. But you can't see the selected area. If I press Ctrl or Command D, it's deselecting, right? Now it will paint all over the canvas. 
Select the magnetic lasso tool and click on the edge of the object you want to select and just move the tool along with the edge. No need to click anything. As you move the tool, it tries to detect the edge of the object. Of course, you can click if you find a corner and again, you can continue move the tool in order to complete the selection. I will select only part of the tower. You can take time and select the complete tower as an exercise. So don't forget to check the links in the description for the practical files. Once you have done with the selection, press the Ctrl or Command J and take the selected area into a new layer. So we have removed the birds by using the regular lasso tool. And we have removed all the cables by using the polygonal lasso tool. Also we have selected the tower by using the magnetic lasso tool. So the next tool is pen tool. Pen tool is the most accurate and flexible way of selecting anything with hard edges in Photoshop. Pen tool is always using in commercial product photography because of this reason. We already have a in detailed separate video dedicated only for the pen tool and the related knowledge. If you missed it, please watch it and master the pen tool as first priority. I will add the link around here if it works. If not, check the links in the description. I will drop it there. What I am going to do here is cut out this beauty product by the pen tool and take it to a plain color background. But this time we are going to preserve the original shadows as it is. Sounds good? Let's do it. I will cut out the product and you know how to do it now. For saving some time, I will fast forward that cutout section. So here we have our selection. Let's make a layer mask by click on this icon while active the selection. Let's create a solid color background layer in order to make a plain background. We will change it to a matching color later. Then make a copy of a background layer and drag it to on top of the solid color adjustment layer. Let's make it visible by click on this eye icon. Now with the help of the regular lesser tool select around the shadow area with the product and press Ctrl or Command J to take it to a new layer. Now you can delete the previous background copy. Let's rename the layer as shadow. Now we will take the color away from the layer. For that go to image adjustment layer hue saturation then take the saturation slide all the way to the left. You will notice that the color has taken away from that layer and click OK. Now create a level adjustment layer on top of the shadow layer and then click on this icon which is clippy mask button. That means the level adjustment layer will affect only the black and white layer. Now adjust this right slider until the edges of the layer disappear. Let's change the color of this solid color adjustment layer. Yes, still it's not done. We have one last step to go. Select the shadow layer and change the blending mode as multiply. As soon as you do that, you can see, now we have the beauty product with the original shadows. We will make a mask for the shadow layer and clean up the edges by painting on black. Remember, if you paint black on a mask, it will hide the content and if you paint on white, you can bring back the content. See how we added the shadow here? Let's check the overall before and after. Here is the before and here is the after. Now you can change the solid color adjustment layer to any color. So that is how we will cut out any commercial product with its own shadows. So I will wind up for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you get any value added from this video, consider subscribing, ring the bell so you will not miss my any future video. Stay tuned and keep doing awesome stuff. Most importantly, don't give up at any point.